titled, whoops, the recording's getting me here. Uh, welcome for her speech entitled Tra The Test, Traumatic or Triumphant. Melanie Chong, Distinguished Toastmaster. Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters, in Australia, when you turn 50, you receive a gift. Now you're thinking, special birthday card from the queen or king, chocolates. Well, I didn't get the card. I did get chocolates from my brother, but it was a poo kit. A poo kit? That's not the type of test or gift you want but it's a gift from the government. It's a very important gift because they say between the ages of 50 and 74, you have a higher chance of contracting bowel cancer. Now, after I turned 50, nothing arrived. So I thought, they've forgotten me. I'm not important. They won't even send me my free gift. But then, Months later, it arrived, an unassuming A4 envelope. And I put it to one side and I thought, hmm, no, I don't really want to see what's inside. I'll leave it there. But it called to me every day, open me, open me. So I thought, all right, fine, I'll open you. And I took it open and I found there were three sheets of paper a cover sheet, which explained what needs to be done with a link to a video, which seemed quite clear because it was a little animation of what I needed to do and a form that I needed to submit with the test samples. The problem was, it said there was some time restrictions, which really put some pressure under me because it said, I have to submit the two samples within 24 hours and it has to go to the post office and it can't be corrupted by being after or too early in the day because the heat will get to it. So the post office needs to be open and there was all this pressure. And I thought, it's the end of the week. And what if I don't get two samples? Then I'll corrupt the one sample and what am I gonna do? I'll postpone it to next week. So next week came and I thought, okay, it's time for the sampling, time for the sampling. And I sat in the bathroom and then I remembered the poo kit was outside and I was inside. So what was I going to do? I'll postpone it again to the next time I have a sample. Then I remembered the instructions. Put the little A5 envelope in the bathroom so it's ready for you when you need your sample. Put it there and when it was time for the sample, ha! Ah, I've got the A5 envelope with me. I opened it. I looked. I, had, I followed the instructions. It had a biodegradable sheet. It said, put it on the toilet bowl so it will catch your sample. And then you can collect it. So I laid it out very neatly, just like the video. Did my sample. Turned around and looked. And the biodegradable sheet had biodegraded <laughs> into the water. And I thought, now what? Now what? But I remembered the instruction. It said, it's still okay to take the sample even if it's sunk in the water. So I opened the test tube with a scraper on the top, took my sample, stuck it in the test tube, and then labeled the test tube. The problem was the test tube is this size, and my writing is this size. <laughs> because I grew up in the era when we didn't do so much writing, so we couldn't squeeze writing like this into this. And my poo kit buddy, I only met on the weekend and she told me, but I know how to write on a sample like that because she was over 74 and she'd learned how to write properly little writing. So I labeled it and I remember the next instruction, put the sample in the sealed, in a sealed parcel in the refrigerator, in the refrigerator with my meat and vegetables. So I thought, well, I'm going to double protect my meat and vegetables and put it in a second container away from everything. 
put it in. Next, I have to get the second sample and the clock is ticking. Clock is ticking. And now, you know how normally when you have a test, you really need to go to the bathroom. But this one, I had performance anxiety and I couldn't go to the bathroom. Now I needed a second sample, but I couldn't go to the bathroom. Now what I was going to do? Well, I thought, well, when we have the next meal or the next meal, there will be a sample. So don't worry, don't worry. Then the next meal came and I thought, I feel nothing. I feel nothing. This performance anxiety is really bad. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it happen. So I'm going to go to the bathroom, lay out my sheet, my biodegradable sheet. And I've now learned I'm going to put it higher up so it doesn't biodegrade. And I will make it happen. So I did make it happen. But then it was a little size. And I thought, well, now I need to get the sample. And the sample didn't want to happen. So I had to stab it so I could get my sample to put it into the test tube. <laughs> then I put it next to the other one because it was a, in a little um, plastic that I could put two in and seal it. And I put it in the refrigerator and I wrote my two page form to explain what the sample was and where it was coming from. Put that into the other A5 post paid envelope did the checklist and then I remembered have to get it to the post office so I got it to the post office but guess what it was the hottest day in the month I thought do not degrade do not degrade because I do not want to do this test again I was yitting but I got it to the post office and handed it to the post guy and he said to me oh you don't need to pay any post and I said yes I don't need to pay any post I got it to you and I followed all the instructions. A week later, I got a letter back and my test was negative. So passed and I don't have to do it for another two years. But I learned that the first time is the hardest. You should probably talk to your poo kit buddy earlier because she also told me a couple of other things, like her friend degraded her sample, even though the biodegradable sheet sank. But I know some lessons for next time around. So whether it's your first pathway speech or your first poo kit, you will do better next time around. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I don't know, but I'm suspecting we may be changing the name of our humor buddies to our Phuket buddies. I mean, that that's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> Something we can all relate to. I have to say, you created a great visual picture. But you know what? Before we go on, I want to ask you, you do know that vampires aren't real, right? Well, unless you count Dracula. Oh. Count Dracula and counting is a round robin evaluator tonight or facilitator counting all of the thing people who are going to participate. Please welcome back distinguished Toastmaster Koki Kubo. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, I got some direct message and I have identified the three folks who has no roles. And I would like to ask uh, Peter. Uh, Peter Barrett to a 30 second evaluation of uh, Marini's speech. Melanie, what a what an enthusiastic speech for such an interesting topic. <laughs> really something we can all get behind, I'm sure. <laughs> that was full of information you gave us plenty to go on. In fact, it's the first speech in a while that I could really give a crap about. <laughs> Nicely done. All right, thank you so much. Now, Rajib. Yeah, Melanie, you, you know how to put words together and uh, and uh, bring humor to something people would rather not talk about. So very well done, and it was full of humor. I enjoyed it. Next time when I go for my test, I think I will remember this speech. 
<laughs> yes, thank you so much. And the last three, I'd like to ask Boranda. Uh, thank you, Koki. I heard the towards the end of your speech, Melanie, and I always look forward to your speeches. They are entertaining. You always have a great way of interjecting humor. So great job there. But I really loved how you just summarized it. I think your summary, uh, especially for me coming on towards the end, I captured your main point and you did it very well with humor. So I would just say keep doing what you're doing. If anything, try to add closed captions. Um, and I see that that is an option here. So let's just make sure we keep that going because we do have a lot of postmasters who are hard of hearing or visually impaired or even blind. So that's a great aspect. But I'm looking forward to your next speech. And thank you so much again, Melanie. Okay. Thank you so much. And back to MC. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Good feedback. Good feedback from Melanie. Coming up next, will she be as corny as me? I'm not sure, but let's give 